Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa. This is our predicted lineup episode for Ipswich Town v Aston Villa in the Premier League. Delighted to be joined by Earl, AVFC scout. How you doing, mate? Yeah, doing well. Looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, it feels now like it can't come quick enough, even though we've got games coming out our ear holes. It's like, I want another one. What competition's next? Let's go to that next challenge. So, on this episode, we're going to go real in depth on Ipswich. We're going to we're going to break down Ipswich. So if there's any Ipswich fans watching, uh, let us know how we do, whether we get it right or wrong. I imagine we get it pretty right. I know a lot of fans that watch us from opposition teams say uh, that we normally get it spot on. So that's good to hear from them. So we're going to go through Ipswich. We're going to go to the tactical pad. We're going to have a look at some still images of what Ipswich have been doing, defending, attacking, who do we need to watch out for? And um, we've got some graphics from Earl as well. So we've got Ipswich over sort of like the season, how they've been doing the passing network over an average of uh, a few games as well. Um, and then we'll have a look at the Villa lineup. And we're going to really look at the Villa lineup up against the Ipswich lineup today and where that battle's going to be. So we're going to go straight to the tactical pad then. So this was Ipswich's lineup from the last game. So it can differentiate between who, who plays, who plays in central midfield, etc., who plays on that sort of like attacking side of things as well. So on paper, they're a 4-2-3-1, but they are far more than just a bog standard formation. They are very sort of fluid within their motions. I wouldn't say that they are sort of like, you know, when you see teams coming up, they're, they're not a Southampton that sort of just want to play out from the back, dictate the the, the ball, etc. That They've got different chinks to their armoury. And one of the big things for them last season was they were a little bit like Villa. They can do possession, but they can also do direct, quick fire attacks. And the balance between the two is really good. And I think that always makes for for a good side. You know, Villa do it. We can play it from the back, but we can go quick and direct with intricate vertical passes, breakthrough teams. And I think that's really difficult to play again. So I'm going to break down what they do and what they are and what they're trying to do when they've got the ball as well. And so a, a big thing for me is that they've been able to get Schmodix in the team as well. I thought, you know, when they signed Schmodix, they signed the lap, I thought it was going to be a bit difficult to get both of them in the team. But he, he's sort of playing on a on a left-hand side attack. But their biggest threat, their biggest threat last season was Davis. Davis was the player last season that got the most sort of goal contributions with, with his assists. He was absolutely brilliant going through on that left-hand side. So a little bit like Villa, what, what we can expect from their left-back is their left-back is going to bomb on, get forward and offer width on that left-hand side. But in turn with that, one of the big things to note is that he's got cover. Now, his cover comes from the central midfielder who operates in this area here. His position will drift and will sit in a little bit through that area when the left back goes forward. So he's got the cover to go forward because the left-sided central midfielder will offer that sort of protection for him when he does go forward. The interesting thing as well is that it just is, doesn't stop there either. So it can become a back three. But what happens generally is that Twanzebe can push up slightly and make up that three in midfield. Now, that three in midfield then has Twanzebe as cover for the midfield. We also see the two centre halves splitting and the goalkeeper actively making up a back three as well. So when he's got the ball, they're comfortable with him to have the ball. And that back three gives them their shape. They've then got a three in midfield. And then they've got a front four or a front five with the lap when they've got possession. Biggest player for me, a big player to watch out for is Amari Hutchinson. You know, he operates in this area through here. He can start here. He can interlink with Burns. They can move around. It's very fluid. But him in this area is this sort of like number 10. There's so many times he takes a shot from the edge of the box. He's got real good quality about him. His passing range is really good. Morsi scored a great goal at the weekend. So he's a big threat as well. And the lap, you know, we've heard about the lap. If anyone plays football manager, I imagine you've always signed the lap up front because he's got that longevity on football manager. But, you know, he, he scored a goal already this season. It was a really well-worked goal. 
against Fulham. And they're, they're a real threat. And I think they've got a bit of everything. They've got control. You can see here now they've got controlled shape and build up of what they want to do. But they're also able to just go more direct, more quicker into those forwards. And, you know, they're, they're a making here of a very good team. You know, this team have gone from League One to the Premier League. And I think when we talked about in the match preview about them having heart that's from it because they've, they've been in a team together. They've had experiences. They've probably had tough times. They've had times where they've been favourites. They've had a bit of everything. And, and I just think they're a really good team. And, and I think, you know, Villa have really got to be careful of Ipswich because they've got a lot of weapons that, that can hurt us. So that's my little bit of a, a mini breakdown on Ipswich. Earl, how are you feeling about Ipswich? Yeah, I mean, I think you've hit the nail on the head. To be honest, I couldn't couldn't have said it better myself. I think the thing the thing with Ipswich is, I mean, you look at teams like Southampton and maybe Burnley last year. Um, you know, very sticking to their style kind of kind of thing and not not willing to you know adapt adapt to the league. Whereas I think I feel as Ipswich have come in. Um, you know, they have they have stayed true to themselves and their style, but they've, they've you know adapted their their style and their game a bit, so yeah, it's going to be a it's a away game in the Premier League. Um, you know, nothing take nothing for granted and go there and uh, put in a professional performance. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. I think that's that's what's needed for me a, a controlled Villa performance. I think we've we've kind of had parts of one. Like I really felt like we started the. Uh, Leicester game really well. We started the Everton game really well, and we really got caught, especially against Everton and and against Wolves. We really didn't impose our style and, and control enough for me. So you've done your wonderful graphics then. So we'll go to them now, and we've got here now the average positions and passing networks over the last three games. So uh, what can you take from this? Yeah, well, the first thing that jumps out to me just looking at the network is that, you know, they've got quite a good balanced shape about them um, and lots of lots of links, uh, you know, throughout the team, to be fair. There's, you know, there's a, a links between most players. Um, looking at the top combinations, you can see, you know, Tuan Zabi, Morsi and Greaves kind of are the names that crop up the most, really, um, towards the top of that list. So they're kind of like the the... The backbone of the team, shall we say? Um, you've got they've obviously brought in Calvin Phillips, um, who missed the last game, but he's um, you know, he's been he's been playing in the the previous couple as well. Um, but yeah, Morsi is is really the the main man in midfield for them. You can see in the in the network, kind of everything in midfield goes through him, and then they've got that really strong um, triangle on the right hand side with with him. Um, to Anzabi, number 40, and then Hutchinson, uh, number 20, who I'm sure we'll, we'll talk more about uh, within this episode. Um, but yeah, you can see as well, for, for him, number 20 there, Hutchinson, he's he's kind of that, that main um, focal point, you could say, in attack. They want to get him the ball and um, try and get him to make something happen. Yeah, he's he's such a good player, and we will we will get on to him because I've got some images of what where we don't want him to be on on Sunday, especially. But you can really see sort of like what I was talking about the back two, the left back's gone forward. Number eight is in that little bit of a screening role. We can see Twan Zabi in that three in midfield. You know that Leif Davies here he's just on the halfway line, but he, he will want to get a little bit further and make that sort of front five. So I think we can all see what needs shutting down here and what needs to be stopped, to be able to to get Villa more control in the game as well. And so, well, we've got a new, we've got a new visual here. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. So talk us through what's happening here. It looks a bit like a computer game and we've got a little bit of like uh, 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 night vision goggles on. So what's going on? Yeah, it's a new one. I'm quite happy with how it turned out, to be honest. But this, so this is, um, I'm trying to visualise where, uh, the opposition team are passing the ball essentially. So we've got we've got kind of the passing network is one way to look at it. But I've kind of added this heat map as well. So it's passing areas over the last three matches, and this is the end locations of the passes. So where the passes end up, 
um, and that's successful passes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the main goal for this is trying to see kind of which areas of the pitch um, the team is targeting with their passes, essentially. So for Ipswich over the last three, you can see here, the, you know, a lot of passes within within their own half. Um, and that's, you know, newly promoted side. They've got, I think, only Everton have, have lower possession than them in the league. So it's, you know, to be expected that, you know, they might not have as much territory up the pitch. Uh, but what you can see is that, you know, those... Um, Kind of hot areas coming up in in wider areas of the pitch moving forward in the opposition half so you can see it a bit there on the left but um but especially on on that right hand side as well yeah and again i think it's sort of painting a picture of of where they want the ball to go to and who they want the ball to have in those key areas so again we've got areas of influence we can see that davis is he's bombing on on that left hand side twan is offering a threat through uh the right hand side as well midfield with phillips and morsi controlling the middle of the pitch and then we've got that front four of schmodix delap hutchinson and burns offering you know, all of their threats on where they want to be as well then. So shots for Ipswich are getting quite a lot of shots off, aren't they? No, not really, to, to no. be honest. Over over the the full five games this season, they're averaging 7.6, which is actually bottom of the league. Um, they have improved over the past three, uh, averaging 10 per game. But yeah, it's still it's still quite far below average, which is around, I think for the league, it's probably around 13 shots per game you're looking at. So, I mean, it's, you know, three less than average per game, but it adds up, it adds up. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing for me in this one, you can see, well, you can just about see there, the, the two goals that they've had in green mm -hmm. uh, have come from outside of the box, kind of lower XG chances as well. Um, but Villa probably need to be wary of that because we have conceded um, goals from outside of the box this season. Yeah, it's something that we. I always feel like Villa sometimes get done with a deflected. It feels like we, we, we get done with that quite a bit and hopefully it doesn't happen. So shots against then, am I right in saying they're having a lot against? Yeah, ex exactly. So, like I'm saying, that the, the average is probably 13, so they, they do concede a above average um, number of shots per game. And what you can see as well in the graph is a lot in the box. Um, so the rings, obviously representing the shots, but the size of the ring represents um, the XG of the chance, so how high a quality of a chance it is. A lot around kind of that six-yard um, six box, six-yard area, um, they've conceded two in the past three games, so you know not a lot, um, less than less than a goal a game. But you can see they are conceding the chances. So you would hope a team of of Villa's quality can, uh, you know, finish those finish those chances if we're given them. Yeah, I mean it was similar to to last week when we were sort of saying like if I think Wolves were giving off something like fourteen per game, and it was like if if they do that against Villa, then they're con going to concede goals and. Albeit they conceded three goals, so I think if if, if that pattern carries on and, and you, you're offering Villa a, a lot of those chances, then I think we are probably gonna gonna take them. So what I want to do now is I want to have a little look at, at each switch on some of the graphics, and I'll, I'll run through them and 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 just try and break down and show you what's going well and what's not. So this was the goal that they conceded against Southampton. It was a wonderful ball from Lalana. Um, and I think it found Dibbling is his name. He's playing like unbelievable at the minute. Like he's so good. His touch is brilliant. Really, really does remind me of Jack Grealish. And I, I think he's a wonderful player. And you know his touch here was fantastic to to set up this chance. But you know it was a, a great ball from Lalana. Broke through the lines. Really nice finish uh, from Dibbling. Again, you can see that touch opened up his body. Uh, was really really good. Really wanted to show you this as well because I think this, to me, highlights what they're trying to do a little bit. You know, look how many players here, Ipswich, have got forward in a, just a general a general attack. Four players they've got 
you know, attacking this this movement here. And Southampton are able to win the ball back, which enabled Southampton to put in a great ball into Cameron Archer, who probably should have done a bit better, I think. He probably should have scored. But again, it really highlights, you know, what they're doing. We've spoke about that they leave their back two. We've spoke about Twan Zabi making up that midfield three. And then Davis is coming back as well. But I think this certain scenario would be something that I'd want Villa to maybe be able to emulate, winning that ball back, sort of isolating those two defenders. I think Watkins would be brilliant in this moment here. We've got Rodgers that could possibly do the same as well. And I think here sort of highlights their sort of, again, how they're, Attacking really, you know, they're, they're, they're getting players going forward. They're sort of, they're, they're sort of like they commit players forward, which I think is what I'm what I'm trying to say. So um, I think this shows their their system a little bit as well. And then this one here now is something that I've picked up on that I don't think they're great at Earl. I don't think they're great at sort of like doubling up on wingers. Uh, I think from what I've been watching so far this season, they allow wingers to be 1v1 up against, um, you know, the opposition players, the space to go out wide, that there's movement there. So do you think this is something that Villa can sort of isolate? I mean, you can see on the opposition side here as well, that there's another one here where they've got a 1v1. So um, I think Villa will look to exploit this with, with Bailey. Yeah, so, well, on this on that example there, you've got... Um... To Anzabi at right back, who they probably fancy one v one against most wingers, but you can get at him, but you know, doubling him up. And then, like you say, on the other side, um, with Davis uh, flying up uh, from left back and you know, getting high up the pitch, attacking. Um, yeah, I mean, Bailey absolutely could get you know, could get back at him uh, on the other end of the pitch. Um, I mean, it's similar to what we saw, you know, Wolves last week with um. Once Bailey was introduced, they had, you know, obviously eight Nori that was ca causing problems in the first half, getting forward. But, um, you know, once we had, we had Bailey on, um, you know, changed changed the game really from that that perspective. So I'm expecting to see see similar. Um, and if you give, you know, Bailey one v one with anyone, um, you know, I put I put I put money on him to, you know, get the better of that. Um, so. Yeah, same. I agree. Right. Big threat then. Big, big threat. This is what we have to stop. This. Amari Hutchinson on the inside, getting that ball out of his feet because he's got the vision. He could slip someone in. He can take a shot. He's got a great shot on him. And I think it's vitally important that we are very aggressive with him and we just try and shut him down and stop him from playing because he's a wonderful player. He's got great talent, great feet, great vision. I really rate him. And it, it was important that Ipswich re-signed him because he was so good for them last year and that they, you know, they didn't want to lose that. So Earl, talk to me about Hutchinson then. Are you a, a big fan? Yeah, like like you say, he's really the key man up top for them. We saw from the passing network, kind of everything attacking wise, they want to they want to get the ball to him. Um, he, you know, he leads the team in shots, passes into the box, um, you know, successful take ons, those those kind of things. So he is kind of their um, spark offensively. Um, but yeah, you'll see on the on Sky Sports whenever they do that. You know the the team lineup. It'll be the four two three one, and they'll put him in the middle. But he's he's a, a right winger really, so he just has that natural tendency where he'll drift over onto the right side to to pick up the ball and then come back inside onto his his stronger left foot. Um, you kind of saw that as well within the the areas of influence graphic as well. It's you know he had a lot of touches towards that right hand side, so he's he's trying to you know create the the overloads on on the right. So. Yeah, it will be um, a, a tough matchup for for Luca Dean and, and whoever else is is playing on the the left for Villa. Yeah, so positives for Ipswich, I think what they're good at. I mean, we've spoke about how they kind of got two styles: they can pass it around, they can go a bit more direct. This goal they scored against Fulham 
sort of like epitomizes that quick, fast fire getting it put forward. They cut out a pass, win the ball back, and it's like a couple of passes later, boom, it's into the lap. The lap's running through, and the lap scores from outside the box. So I think this highlights for me an area that we've got to be very, very careful with, with our possession and when we're setting our structure, that if we lose the ball, then we've got to be aware that there's going to be a big threat here, especially on transition. I've got another graphic here just highlighting when there were sort of like 1v1 space out wide, so that sort of uh, backs up that one. But this, oh, this is probably one of the... Um, biggest things that I've spoke about in the last couple of episodes is they find a way. They, they, they've got a ne never say die attitude. They've got lots of heart and they don't know when they're beat. Now this was sort of like in injury time to get the points against Southampton and edge of the box. Morsi strikes it. It's an absolute banger, but this is what they do. You know, there were, there were goals flying in from everywhere late in games last season. So from a Villa point of view, whether the game's done or not, we've really got to be aware of just that Ipswich desire. Um, do you think that's like a... I mean, you can't really sort of like legislate for that, but I think this is a, a big part of Ipswich. Yeah, it's, it's just about concentration. Concentration for us, really. Got you know, got to stay concentrated for the the ninety minutes plus however however much added time um, there's going to be. You know, it's their first season back in the in the Premier League for you know however many years. They're at home. They've got that never say die attitude, like you say, and it's it's not just a, it's not a recent thing. It's you know it's been been from last season as well. So yeah, it's just just about concentration for me, being professional. Um, and, and get the job done. Yeah. So we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally we predict the lineup, but we're going to predict the lineup and put them both side by side then. So we'll predict it and then we'll have a look at like the key battles, etc. So uh, for me personally, I think the biggest um, talking point is going to be what we do with our right back slash right sided centre half. Um, Talk to me about this area, then this right-hand side for Villa. What do we do? Because before we came on air, I was even kind of thinking that because Davis is such a threat on this left-hand side, you know, that it, there's going to be problems here for Villa. I probably would want Conser there, but now Carlos came, didn't make the match day squad. Could we put Bogard at centre-half, or is that just a big no-no? Is it going to be Conser at centre-half, Bogard at right back, or do we do something a little bit different? Where are you at? Um, I think I think right now Bogard at, at centre half is a is a no from me. Okay. I, I think I think at this at this level, I, I don't think he has the physicality yet to play centre half, and that's 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 my biggest. Um, biggest thing with him at the minute I think he's a, he's an absolutely wonderful player I think um you know on the boys he's, he's a football player um but yeah I think I think it's just that physicality maybe at times that that's been letting him down and I think that would be even more um you'd, you'd see that even more if he was at center half so so yeah I, I'd, I'd, I'd stick with if Carlos doesn't fit I'd, I'd stick with Conter at, at center back yeah and so, are you okay with Bogard at right back or Costa at right back? I mean, Cash apparently is in training this week, so he might be back for Bayern Munich, I reckon. Yeah, I think. Well, I think Cash is Cash is obviously targeting that that Bayern Munich game. He, as as you can imagine, he probably really wants to play in that game. In order to do that, I think he needs probably needs to see some minutes in that in this game. Whether that's from the start, I don't know, but. So we might see a substitute appearance from Cash. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, Bogard or or Costa. I think. I think I'd, I think I'd go with Bogard just because I, I like that that three at the back shape. 
yeah. more than I do, especially away from home. If we were playing at home, I'd go with Costa. I think away from home, I'd want to start the game with with more of a more of the back three kind of vibes. So, yeah, it's, it's Bogard for me, and then um, I'd bring in Costa or or Cash if he's fit. Um, maybe half time or sixty minutes. Yeah, I think a lot of games are always won in, in, in midfield. I think that battle's going to be big. You know, Telemans, we're going to have we're going to have Telemans, we're going to have um, Onana in this sort of like midfield area. I think that's going to be vitally important that we we dominate that area. But one of the biggest areas I think the, this game is probably going to be won is in these two areas here, because what a, what a hope happens is a hope that Bailey can push back Leif Davis. Now, we saw it against Aint Nori. Soon as Bailey came on, that area was shut down. Now, Bailey's a, a, an absolute wonderful player. So, Bailey here, he is going to offer that width down there. So, it should dominate that area for me. And the same with Luke Dean. We know at Villa, our left-back goes forward. So, up against Twan Zabi. We're going to have Ramsey in this little pocket, probably, that's going to be, you know, when he comes in here and he, he's moving players around, etc. So I think that's going to be really important. And then like we saw with a couple of the graphics when it was the two at the back for Ipswich, we've got, you know, willing runners of, of Rogers getting on the ball, passing it through to Watkins. And I think that's going to be uh, vitally important areas for me. So I, I just want Villa to control this game and this tempo and and just be comfortable do you think Villa are going to sort of like just dominate the ball or do you think at times like we may try and just invite Ipswich onto us remember um Burnley away last season where we sort of just wanted them to come at us a bit and we just hit them a bit faster like what sort of game do you think is gonna pan out here yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I, I don't think it's going to be, um, you know, like Everton where we just had all of the ball kind of thing. There, there are going to be moments. I, I would I would expect us to have, you know, higher possession than them. Uh, like you say, I think the the midfield battle, I think, you know, with, with Tielemans in there especially, I think I feel like we win that. So, yeah, I think we'll have the ball, but I think, there, you know, there will be spells, like, like you say, where we... Yeah, might, might invite them onto us a little bit. Um, that that Burnley game that you mentioned is, you know, that's, that's quite a good point, really. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, so I think that's quite a lot of information. Um, I think we've, I think we've smashed it, Earl. Uh, I think we've gone through quite a lot of it in detail as well. So Villa fans, if you've enjoyed it, make sure you're smashing the likes, comment your thoughts, how you think the game's going to go, what lineup do you think we're going to go for, um, how do you feel about facing Ipswich as well and subscribe to the channel. So um, cheers, Earl. Thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah, no worries. Up the Villa. <laughs>